The Scientific Advisory Board created by the Secretary General is a really unique institution that has a lot to offer and a lot of potential. I think along three dimensions. Usually science asks the question, what is and why? What is the state of the world? What is the state of the environment? What is the state of the human system and why? In the social sciences and in policy world, we go a step further in the policy sciences. We ask the question of what ought to be? What are the social models that we should aspire to? What are the models that we could create, that we could adapt, adopt, employ, that would bring a better world? And I think the Scientific Advisory Board actually pushes us even a step further, bringing natural science and social science, asking the questions, what is and why? What ought to be? And then the third step is, how do we get there? And the Scientific Advisory Board is a unique mechanism of transmission of knowledge that would allow us to understand the state of the world, problems that need to be addressed, a aspirational state of the world, but also the concrete steps and drawing on our transdisciplinary knowledge, our transnational makeup, we could actually be a transformative mechanism. Several hundred scientists from around the world are engaged in producing that report every five years. And this, this time around, I had the privilege to be a coordinating lead author for the last chapter, the policy chapter. It's called the policy responses. And I think there are several key lessons from the process of the global environment outlook that one can adopt in the scientific advisory board, but also in the UN assessments more broadly. One is analytical rigor. Every assessment, every input of science into the policy world has to be rigorous up to scientific standards. And this is what comes with the territory. When scientists engage in these processes, they bring the culture of analytical rigor. Second is communication. Communication with peers, with peer scientists, a lot of peer review going on in the global environment outlook process but also communication with policymakers. It's ingrained, it's part of the process that we meet with policymakers, discuss the objectives, and have a common conversation. The third is communication with the public. I have to say that is much more difficult to enact. It's much more difficult to implement because the public for a global environmental assessment is global. It's large. It is amorphous and it's very difficult to create a message that is scientifically very rigorous and yet engaging to a public. So I have to say at the UN we still have a challenge of uh, overcoming that hurdle and we in the Scientific Advisory Board have to think about that. One of the suggestions yesterday was why don't we have an ex officio member of the Scientific Advisory Board who is, for example, a Pulitzer Prize winning author or a journalist, someone who can tell the story in captivating terms so that we bring the global public with us through a new narrative. I would say analytical rigor, communication and engagement are as the essence of, of a significantly substantive uh, process that our scientific board could adopt and could lead to better impact.